stop. We're at the XL. We're here. It is Saturday morning. I woke up at five. I didn't, wait, what's the time now? 8.43. 8.43. Leaving later than I wanted to, but it took me three hours to get ready. I didn't know it would take me that long. It took me a very long time, but we're now ready and on our way to the con. First thing I need to do is find where the Loki panel is going to be and work out when to start queuing, which will probably be as soon as I get there. And then I'll just queue there all morning. On our way, Tom Hiddleston is going to be in the building the next two days that we are here. That's quite I didn't get crazy. To him, but I get to see him. If I smile, it looks really weird. <sighs> oh yeah, it gets crusty if I smile. That's it. I can't smile. Can't smile all day. We've made it. We're in. It was so much busier than it was yesterday. It took forever, but we got there, and we're heading to the ICC now. It's signposted. How helpful. I was able to concentrate in, I got a seat. I took my contact out of one eye because the vision's blurry in it. And I took the contact out and my eyelash off and it's still blurry. So it might just be my eyesight. But yeah, I can see fine. It's fine out the other eye. It's just the left one. Okay, I'm so close though. I'm walking around with one eye contact and eyelash on. It actually looks kind of cool. Um, updates. I've just met one of my mutuals from TikTok and Instagram for the first time. She's going to watch the Loki panel so she came and sat next to me. So she's now keeping our seats saved and I'm going to get us some drink because my throat is dying and I need a hot drink. Uh, we've still got just over an hour until the panel starts. There's a like DJ dude who played like a game with some people, keeping everyone entertained. Yeah, that's it. I'm so excited for the panel though and I'm so close. It's going to be so good.
Absolutely fantastic. It's so nice to see you all. It's been so long. And um, we make this, we make these stories for you. And we know how much they mean to you and for so many different reasons. So it's lovely to be back. Wow. wow. I mean, yeah, it's actually, it's beautiful to see so many people in one room. And I'm just glad that we can finally do this I know. safely. And, Nice to see you all! Some of the funny, funniest ones are read to me. Um, and um, there, there was a, so much, um, there was such a terrific and varied response to Loki when it came out this summer. Um, some of the memes and the gifts that I saw were, it really made me laugh, so yeah, keep them coming. Sorry. I mean, I, I've always, I always have enjoyed playing Loki. He's such a complex character with so many um, complexities and contradictions. And the longer I played him, I feel a, um, an increasing responsibility to um, to deliver a character that everybody loves, but also. A, a curiosity about finding new facets every time. And the most thrilling aspect uh, was, was actually taking Loki away from everything that was familiar to him. Um, taking him away from Asgard, taking him away from his family and his brother and his father and his mother. And, and seeing, challenging him profoundly with the TVA and with his own story. Um, and with many different aspects of himself, and I found that um, a really uh, terrific um, starting point. Um, and as you now know, and what a relief it is to be able to share it with you, um, I was joined on this Loki journey by many other Lokis um, who could share in the delights of wearing horns and uh, and leather, gold, leather and <laughs> everything else, um, even the alligator, um, <laughs> wasn't a lonely journey at all, it's very much a family ride. Did you, have you had, Tom, a favourite moment playing the character, not just in the series, but just over time, was there a moment that stood out to you that you loved? I don't know that I could pick a favourite moment of playing the character. I've definitely had moments which have become um, which have become cornerstones for the character for the characterisation. Um, I can name a few. One was in the very first Thor movie, directed by Kenneth Branagh, when Loki found out the truth of his lineage for the first time. The scene I played with. Um, Anthony Hopkins, uh, it was a pleasure to play that scene and became a, a kind of emotional anchor for the character. Um, I remember uh, standing on Stark Tower and staring out at the destruction of New York and playing a scene with Robert Downey Jr. in Avengers, that felt it's very memorable. Um, I see it. Get help in Ragnarok. Is, <laughs> it comes around a lot, um, and and obviously that moment in Infinity War. But there is recently there were just so many moments in in Loki with Sophia and with Jonathan uh, and everybody in in the cast with Owen Wilson, yeah. um, absent friend here today. I'm sure he would love to be here, um, and. Uh, 
Yeah, and they're particularly surreal in episode five um, of Loki standing in a room with and every other cast member, and there were about 25, was dressed as Loki. Well, this, is, this job has changed from what you saw. Um, yeah, many memorable moments. Good. Two conversations, right? Um, I think it's now public knowledge uh, that um, I gave some Loki lectures. Oh, okay. Uh, I was asked by Kate Heron, who I wish were here today. Maybe she is. Ah, Kate Heron, are you in the Hey, are you out there? <laughs> um, uh, Kate, our extraordinary director, asked me to assemble the heads of department. So this is the production designer, stunt coordinator, head of hair and makeup, costume designer, cinematographer. Um, I should mention more, Kazra Farah Farahani, Orton Durald, Christine Wada, all these extraordinary practitioners who built the world of our show. And as you now will understand, there, were, there was a, a kind of, there were lots of questions about Loki. What makes Loki, Loki? And as you can see that why that question was relevant because we were going to sort of dig into that with the idea of variants. Classic Loki, kid Loki, boastful Loki, alligator Loki, president Loki, um, and of course, Sylvie. And so they were kind of, I was, as it were, drawing a little map of the territory I had investigated and also the territory I hadn't. Um, and so I think in that respect, we talked about, about how the way he looked and comic book inspirations from different comic book artists and writers um, and practically things that I had been sort of, that I had had the experience of going through, you know, um, wearing costumes that you could do a somersault in and also eat your lunch in, you know, <laughs> um, and capes and horns and um, magic and all that kind of stuff. And, oh, I love yeah. these Loki lists. I want a Loki lesson. So anyone up for a Loki lesson? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds kind of fun. Did you delve into Lady Loki and the lore and the history and everything behind that, or did you go in with a fresh head, Sophia? I, I went with a fresh head, really, and just approached the character as it had been written in the script and. Because, you know, she's kind of a mashup of a few different characters and she's a new character, really. Um, yeah, so I didn't want to do an impression of Tom because that would be really bad. <laughs> um, but we definitely had a conversation about when we were fighting. We, we, our fighting styles were, were, are very different, Loki and Sylvie's fighting styles. Um, but we did try and mirror each other occasionally. Um, things like when we're walking up um, to meet you in, in the big scary house. We tried to sort of walk in unison, didn't we? And, you know, just sort of mirror each other occasionally. So, you know. We wanted it to look really elegant and graceful and then occasionally one of us would leave with the right, the other would leave sort of go, sorry, <laughs> just go back, let's go. We'd pull the same fighting stance and yeah. then kind of be annoyed by it, that kind of yeah. <laughs> Love relationship. It. <laughs> Things move at a certain pace. You know, and I thought, well, this is this has got to be at the speed of escape, right? The speed of fun, the speed of fight. You know, this is like the speed of escape. You know, this guy is in some way trying to, you know, get a deal done. You know, um, and that was the speed. And so, I thought, there's this, all this time that he's been around. There's all these wonderful things. You know, um, what did he stick? What what was he really like? And oddly, it was uh, Judy Garland. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I watched a lot of Judy Garland videos. Um, and just kind of thought, like, that's that energy, that type of um, need to communicate, that type of internal uh, turmoil in life, you know, but also trying to get it done, you know, being a showman, you know, being a she, I love Judy Garland. Um, that was the energy, and, and ultimately, like, Play the objective, you know, you know, sorry, boring acting stuff, you know, but like, no. you know, play, play hard, you know, it's going to be a fun time. Um. We had a really good time, you know, and, and, and we loved sitting across from each other and playing these long scenes and, um, it, you know, kind of like a, a tennis match. And um, he, yeah, it was just a pleasure from start to finish. I'm 
every day it just kept getting richer and richer and better. Still, it's just running. Oh, you're quite fidgety. Do you like to move around? I don't know. I've forgotten. Jonathan, I've forgotten. I just say this is it all the time. I apologise unreservedly. Although I do, it reminds me that I, that's what I, I think I feel, and perhaps I feel it even more keenly now, um, that th this, I suppose, this one, one chance, one opportunity, one chance gift of being in a room full of extremely talented and skillful people, and and so grateful for that, and, and so I suppose on Loki, I, this is it, like, this is it, this is our chance, this is it's today. It's right now. I found it every day. I found that an exciting prospect that you, because in a film, of course, as people know, it's separate from doing a play. Uh, each day, you isolate a scene or a number of scenes, put them on film, and then you never come back to them. And so every day is another chance to have a go, have a, to have a go at it, to, to be creative. To be inspired, to be in, to to you know take inspiration from your from your co-workers and your playmates, and there was so much inspiration about. We had the best crew, maybe the best crew I've ever worked with, and um, it was so enjoyable because the atmosphere I think created by Kate um, and Autumn and uh, and Kevin Wright, our producer for Marvel Studios. Michael Waldron and Eric Martin and our great team of writers was the best idea. The best idea will will win, and anyone can come up with it. It was a very collaborative environment, so I think I was just probably um, excited. But yeah, this is a, what am I like on set, guys? <laughs> <laughs> All right, dish the Let's go. That was lovely, Tom. No, a lot of music. I played a lot of music. Endless music. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. So Tom takes his speakers everywhere, and we'll play like music. It ended up being music from the show, though that you got from the composer, which was great because it got us all into the mood before a scene. You know that dun 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 dun. So that would be playing in a huge studio like this just before we'd go on set. So. I can't yeah, wonder if hope that you might play like Hall and Oates or something before you go on set. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> you often played a bit of En Vogue as well, weren't you? What's it called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was our little soundtrack for episode <laughs> six. I couldn't stop singing that song. As they were fighting, I was like, I was just singing it the whole time. I had it playing in my head. It was, it was, it's perfect, isn't it? Like, we played Nile Rogers, we played Daft Punk. Um, uh, what else did we play? I can't think now. There's some classical stuff, probably. Oh, I love it. I like that. To just get pumped up, kind of thing. A lot of nineties pop. Well, did have a theme once where I was play. I would play. Um, Brimful of Asher was played a lot. Brimful of Asher, but yeah, but there were if it had because it was all about time. The time variance authority. Time is this circular thing. It's multiple. It's a multiverse. It was all pretty exciting. And if I found a track, if I remembered a track that was about time, then somehow made it onto the playlist. I mean, it was just dad jokes forever. Um, <laughs> If I could turn back time, share um, time after time, uh, time is on our side. Um, so funny, I feel like you can meet this guy. Um, oh, I would say uh, there's something about the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I really liked that was when I had to watch it from the outside. And it's with all these characters. Villains, heroes, anti-heroes, etc. have a very independent spirit in them, in that they're all driven by that independent spirit. Good, bad, or indifferent, they're driven by that. And that's, that's what propels them. Um, be stubborn. If you, if you want to do something, um, if, you, if you try hard enough and for long enough, you, you, can, you can probably do it. You've just got to be really stubborn and not give up. Um, and like Jonathan said, just be true to you and um, don't try and be like anyone else. Just try and be the best you you can be and be nice to people. Um, and they'll be nice back most of the time. How do I follow? I know the pressure, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry.
You've got some words of wisdom. No pressure, sorry, Tom. This, is a, this sounds like a banal one, and I'll follow it up with something else, but it, it was something someone told to me when I was younger, and I never forgot it, and uh, it's true. Be on time. <laughs> the, 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 it, it sounds strange and silly, but it's actually the whole, because it's a collaborative, we're in a collaborative um, uh, world, and, I, and it's so respectful to others, when, when you're trying to meet in the middle. And I, and I realized, I learned the hard way, like when I was starting out on auditioning and stuff, you just, if you're ready and on time and prepared, it all goes easier. And I wasn't always on time at the beginning. So um, that's not me standing from on high. Um, be on time, be prepared, and, and be true to you. Um, there is no one on this earth who is like you. You are the only person who can do what you do, who has lived your life, has internalized your experience, and uh, that song in your heart belongs to you and you alone. Um, and, and hold that very dear, because it's precious, and every voice is worth hearing. So whatever story you have, whatever you want to say, keep it close and, and hold it dear and stay true, and you'll be fine. Thank you. We can't say anything, unfortunately. Um, Sorry. I have to give you something. But what is exciting, I suppose, is um, at the end of episode six of season one, um, Loki comes back to the TVA. He's quite traumatized. Um, he's quite emotional. And he tries to explain what's happened to Mobius. Mobius doesn't recognize him. And then he turns to look at the statue of the timekeepers, but in fact, it's not a statue of the timekeepers, it's a statue of someone else. Um, I'm aware I'm just explaining the end of it. <laughs> um, I guess we'll start from there. There you go. <laughs> I'm happy. I, I won the lottery, I think, so yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> All my makeup's so smudged. <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> I normally find these ones really hard to get in. So, okay, it is the end. We've just watched the Loki panel. I have met Alan here. We ha we became mutuals on TikTok and Instagram, and found out we were both going today. So we met up. Yeah, this was complete coincidence that we've ended up being the Todoroki siblings. So that's worked out really well. But we ended up watching the Loki panel together. It was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. So now we've just found a spot. We've had lunch. I'm about to fix my makeup because it is destroyed. Um, and then we're gonna go find people and do stuff. Yeah.
inside of my mask covered in paint and staples. <laughs> We are, we're going outside to hang out with um, a cosplay group, they're all outside, I'm going to introduce them to our Did a uh, my hero photo shoot meet thingy. We're back and I'm gonna get my makeup off now and shower and chill. Most people have gone to the pub. I did have a ticket, but I'm not gonna go now. Just showered and they're getting McDonald's, so we're gonna have McDonald's and then I'm gonna start getting ready for tomorrow. A lot is happening tomorrow. Well, I mean, I'm eating dumplings in the morning, and then I also really want to go to the Daredevil panel, so we might have two things tomorrow. Oh, exciting! It's half ten, going to bed. I don't need to wake up until I think seven. Priority doesn't start until ten. I just need to make sure I'm in by quarter past ten so I can get to the photo op. I got my picture. I'm losing my mind. He's really tall. You can't say anything. And also, the, all, all of the, the guys I've met this weekend, they, no one's actually asked me. They've just said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, fine. Good, then great. 